Hello Internet! Today we have this fancy Asus Rogue Strix laptop in for repair that came without screws, which is always a plus. The laptop came after someone had tried to fix it, so let's see if we can fix the fix they fixed, if that makes any sense. The first order of business is we need to remove any traces of herpes from this device before we get personal with it. I'm the herpes, the herpes. See you in hell, <laughs> and with all the herpes removed, let's crack this thing open and see what's inside. No sign of liquid spill on the back cover, which is good. The bad is that we have liquid metal used on the CPU, which is often the number one killer of any laptop. The cooler fins on the right are badly damaged. It's hard to see it right now, I don't think I have footage of that in detail, uh, but right now let's continue taking this apart and see what we find. Starting with basic sanity check, measuring resistances, I didn't find anything wrong, so next step would be to figure out how to power this thing without the power supply, to monitor its consumption. Using my Chinese multimeter, after finding which pins are ground and which are not, gives me about 51% confidence that I narrowed down the pin I need to supply 20 volts to. But after struggling for a while, it seemed impossible to do with this type of hook. So I ended up just soldering the wire directly to the filters. Before I power the board, a visual inspection can provide us with some useful information, such as this pin looks different from the rest and some signs of corrosion near the NVMe slot, as well as the broken antenna socket. Also a more significant sign of corrosion inside the socket for the ribbon connector. At this moment I don't know what to do with the antenna socket because I do not have the part or any donor boards from which I could harvest that, so I'm gonna have to leave it alone. And on top of that we have this BIOS chip with flux all over serving us with a clear warning of someone attempted to do something about it. Once I got that cleaned up, I also went on the back side and there was one knocked off capacitor for the data line between the CPU and the GPU. And a missing capacitor here, which according to a completely different board view that I was able to find, uh, using the power of the brain deduction, I was able to deduce that the capacitor here is a filtering capacitor for 1.8 volt, and we can leave it alone. At that point, I think it is safe to power the board and see what voltages we have and where. 20 volt present, 17.5, 5, and that's it. Everything else is at zero because the board needs to be turned on and um, since my board view isn't the same, I don't really know which pins I need to short in order to turn it on. So I'll go ahead and put the board back into the shell, connect the keyboard and press the power button. Now we have 0.75 volt, that's likely the AMD CPU related, 1.8, 12 on the fans, Nothing on the GPU core and some weird reading on the CPU, which I'll be honest, I'm not familiar with, so I don't really know what their value is supposed to be, because you know, laptop expert. Huh? <laughs> you serious? Some 3.3 volt here, 5, some weird 0.2, who knows what that is. Basically nothing around the GPU and the memory. And no wonder, if we look at the power supply, it won't even pull half an amp. So let's plug in the memory card and see what changes. There, we now pull more current, but it seems like once it starts to spike, it shuts down and stays low. That could be an indicator of low amperage limit, so let's increase the amp limit from 3.5 to 5.5 and see if that helps. There we go, looks like we've stopped at 2.7 amps and that's a good sign. Now let's put the cooler back on the board and at that moment I realized that the fans were a little dirty and I wanted to clean them, but they don't come apart to make that easy. 
Thumbs down for Asus doing this on a premium device like that. After assembling the coolers, the 20 volt wire is now short to ground, so I'll have to solder it away from the cooler before the filters. And try again. At which point this button suddenly decided to fall out and we're gonna have to order a new one and replace it later. In any case, powering the laptop and waiting for long enough produced no positive result. Screen remained black and it seems like the power just got stuck at almost 3 amps and that's it. The DIY mini USB init tester shows activity on the hub but no video output for some reason. Next, I wanted to see if maybe system boot into the operating system and we get an image from an HDMI. But no, no image. Okay, flashing BIOS it is. Most of laptop repair rookies go for BIOS and since I am no better, let's do the same thing and see if that helps. At which point it is absolutely necessary to save the existing dump before flashing it with another one. So let's program the chip solder it back to the board, power it up again, and see what it does. It posted. Incredible. Short is gone. So I'll put everything together, power it on, and get stuck at the pin screen. I later used my own SSD to get into the system and I noticed a couple of problems. Bluetooth adapter doesn't seem to work and I don't know why and also the GPU isn't working properly. I ended up manually installing drivers for the GPU and that seemed to be working. I even ran a short test to make sure that it works. As for the Wi-Fi module and the button, I ordered them both and when they arrived I put the module inside Replace the button, at which point I already had access to the operating system for further testing. Turns out I didn't have to buy the Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi adapter to begin with. It just refused to work with my old drive because it had Windows 10, not 11. Maybe that was the issue, I don't know. In any case, uh, I got lucky with this laptop and the owner actually had Steam account with lots of games available for me to test the GPU's performance but I ran into one small problem where no sound was coming from the speakers. The sound came out of the speakers when the laptop boots, but not after the operating system loaded. I'm no audio repair expert, so all I could think of was maybe the diodes went bad, but no, I had them replaced and it made no difference. I still have no sound coming from speakers. I even replaced the audio codec chip, and to top that off, I cleaned the jack in the ultrasonic thinking that maybe it's corroded inside, but after soldering it back in place, still no sound. I later realized that this laptop came in at least 10 different variations. This particular laptop not only has 4 different submodels, but those models are also different depending on the year they were made and I needed to know which one was made in 2022. With the correct firmware extracted from Asus website and flashed to the chip, the computer seemed to recognize a new device and the sound now works. Now remember the condition in which the laptop came in and the list of problems I had down the road some of which were caused by my lack of experience. But in the end, everything was fixed with the exception of Wi-Fi antenna connector, which I didn't have at the time. Every step of this repair was communicated to the owner and somewhere along the lines of nearly 100 emails, I forgot to mention that I was going to leave the Wi-Fi antenna alone. Shortly after he got his laptop back, he promptly bricked the BIOS using some software that he found on GitHub and now he wants me to fix it again for free. Instead, I offered him less than half of the original repair cost, he went on Reddit and you know the rest. It is incredibly depressing to be punished so severely after doing the best you've got to satisfy the customer who in the end takes you to the court of injustice filled with corrupt judges who are there just for a spectacle 
and for fun for watching the drama unfold. So I gave him full refund and sent him to Northridge Fix. Bummer. No pay for days of work, no pay for parts, no pay for the corrupt court fees either. Thank you for watching, hopefully you've learned something from this simple yet time consuming repair. Goodbye.